to look at your account and believe that you're going to do something a thousand or a million times what you currently have in your account by the end of this year. It takes faith to believe that. Faith sees the invisible. This is how faith works. Can you see it first? For all of you who are business owners and entrepreneurs, I really want to stretch your mind with this teaching of faith so that you go beyond your current level. What you call faith, a smaller version of it, which makes those in the secular world to succeed. What language do they call it? Risk. And if you notice everything I'm teaching you here is what they use. That's what they use when it comes to risk, right? They build things. And when they build, they tell you that we're building because we know people will come. What guarantees them that people will come? They learn from the scripture what belongs to us. They are using it to ride over us. Five things to remember about faith. I'm intoxicated by the power in that name. That name is more powerful than neutron bomb. More powerful than chemotherapy. That name is more powerful than radiotherapy. I've seen the name work. This is the Transforming Church International. One church making global impact. Can I have a great amen? amen? All right, please help me look at someone and say your faith will work. Help me look at someone, please, and say your faith will work wonders. God bless you, please. You may be seated. How faith works. That's my consideration today in continuation of what we have started. Please write this down. Faith is positive response to God's word. Faith is positive response to God's word and will. Faith is positive response to two things. The word of God and the will of God with corresponding action. Faith is positive response to God's word and God's will with corresponding action. So if I believe the word of God, the proof is that there will be positive response to that word with corresponding action. You have not yet believed until you have acted. Write that down. It is not yet faith until you act on it. God has been telling me to run and I believe God that I will run. It is not faith if it ends with belief. It is not faith. If all you say. Is I believe that God has healed me. With no corresponding action. The proof of faith. Is corresponding action. The proof of faith. Is corresponding action. The Lord said to me, maybe talking to you, the Lord told you and he said, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm blessing you. I'm giving you a land in this city. And you're like, my God, amen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. And then you begin to confess, I have land in this city. I have land in this city. That's great belief. But it, it has come short of faith if you don't start going out to ask for the price of land. Does that make sense? It doesn't cost you anything to ask for the price of it. The Lord said, I'm giving you a new car. Go and ask for the price. It doesn't cost you anything to ask. 
But it is a proof to God that you believe what he said to you privately. I shared our story with you. My bishop called me and he said, Pastor Sam, 2029, 2021, December, he said, the Lord said, I'm giving the church land. I'm giving you lands in 2022. Amen. I receive it. The man of God, my pastor has spoken. Hallelujah. And I'll just sit down. Father God, I'm waiting for this land. Though. The man of God said there's going to be land this year. Isn't that what most of us do? So the man of God said there's going to be land this year. So Lord, I'm trusting you for land this year. I believe what the man of God has spoken. No, so I didn't wait. As soon as he spoke, the first thing I did was to call Pastor Degbaro from our Galadimawa Center. And I said, sir, you are into lands. I said, the bishop said that God is blessing us with lands this in 2022. I said, sir, can you help me look for lands? And I said, the bishop said lands in hectares. So when Pastor Degbaro called me and told me that he saw two hectares, around Karasana, I said, hey, so how much is it? When he mentioned the price, faith almost left me completely. I said, Bishop didn't tell me that this thing I told you God will give you is expensive. You see, God never tells you the cost. In the school of faith, God does not discuss price. Can, can I help you here today? In the journey of faith, God doesn't discuss cost. I will take you to a land. That's all God tells you. I'm taking you to a land flowing with milk and honey. God did not discuss the cost with them. The price involved. God did not discuss that with them. Why? Is it that God doesn't discuss the price? Because the mind of man is trained to dwell on negatives than on positive. On positives. Are you catching what I'm saying here? I want to help you. Are you really ready to be helped here today? Were you blessed last week? Fantastic. Let's take it a little a step further today. I, I want to show you how great men do great things. I want to show you how sons and daughters of ordinary people do extraordinary things. I want to show you how people from no background set incredible records on the planet called earth. When God speaks, he does not discuss price. He doesn't discuss cost. God only tells you what is possible. But Pastor Sam, why doesn't he tell me the in-betweens? Why doesn't God discuss the price and the cost with me? Because your mind can be so fixated on the cost that you are willing to give up the reward. So he says to you, I'm taking you to a land flung with milk and honey. But he never tells you that you will go through the wilderness. So that when you are going through the wilderness, please take note. Whenever God tells you what he's about to do and you begin to see the price and the cost involved. Don't give up what God said he will do because of the cost or the price or the challenges or the difficulties in between. God told you what he will do so that your mind can be focused on that. So when you begin to go through challenges, what you are confessing is where you are going to rather than what you are going through. Your mind must be focused on the final destination and not the journey we are going to lagos we're flying to lagos i'm taking you to lagos i'm taking you to london i'm taking you to america that's what the pilot discusses with you how we will get there you don't know 
And there are moments when you go through turbulence. <laughs> we were coming in. I left London yesterday night. And came in this morning. And at some point, I think before midnight, I noticed some little bit of, amen. Like the plane was trying to, I think, exercise itself in the air. Now, rather than fear enter my heart, the simple things, rather than fear enter my heart, I just reminded myself, I'm going to Abuja. And a king does not die outside Jerusalem. I didn't leave London. I left Nigeria on Friday night. I left Nigeria on Friday. And I told my wife, I'm coming back Sunday morning. And I said, I'll be in church this morning to preach. So whatever comes in between is none of my business. Oh God, can, can, can I help somebody? Okay, so, so I was on a fast throughout yesterday. So from morning until 10, the only thing I had taken was water. And then about 11, this turbulence wanted to happen. I said, no, you no be me. I, I no get covenant. Now, air, did I say I was going to mid-air? I told my wife, if you are looking for me, look for me mid-air. No. When that turbulence happened, I took my first meal. I stretched properly. Maximum stretch. And God so kind, um, I had pillow from the other passenger. Was not. I carried this pillow. I surrounded myself with pillows. Stretch my legs. My mama Konjola, one of our senior women in the country, she was just beside me. Came with greeted and all of that. I stretched legs as far as it can reach and slept. The lady came close. She woke me. She said, would you want breakfast in the morning? I said, no. No breakfast in the morning. I said, she said, that means don't wake you up. I said, don't wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why your heart beats is jumping up and down you are too focused on the journey you are too focused on the journey every gagao matters to you the one who wrote the script of your life told you it shall be well with the righteous. I will never forget that movie. That, that scenario. Very early in my Christian life. I was told of the man who went to watch a movie. And when he went to watch a, a woman who went to watch a movie. And she was seated beside this man who was eating popcorn. And the man was just chewing popcorn. And the woman was beside him. I know it was in those days of horror movie. Gagao, gagao, gagao. Dracula's. And, and the man was and the man was eating popcorn. And you know, when there's the gown, like they were going to kill the actor. Ha! Ah, the woman, you know, have you watched, have you sat around people who are playing football and play your legs? And so the woman we grab the man, and the man said, Take your hands off. And then when they want to gagow again, they want to get the actor, she will stretch her hand and say, like, Take your hands off. At the point, the woman turned to the man eating popcorn. Ain't you concerned that they're about to kill the actor? He said, woman, mind your business. After a while again, ain't you concerned? And the man just looked at her and he said, listen, he said, I, I wrote the script. He said, and I know the end. It's going to be okay with the actor. The only person stressed is you watching. Even the actor in the movie knows the end. You did hear what I said right there. <laughs> I said even the actor in the film knows the end. You see that moment when they're trying to catch him and he's jumping. And they're trying to shoot and he's jumping. 
The actor knows I'm just jumping. They won't kill me. You know why? I have read the script. And at the end of the script, I am alive. Is there anybody in this house who has read the script? Is there anybody who has read the promise of God concerning your life? Is there anybody here who wants to say, I know what the Lord says concerning me. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected. Is there anybody here who knows what God is saying concerning you? Follow me properly. Hallelujah. Come on, let me touch your neighbor and say, relax. It's all going to be okay. It's all going to be okay. When you enter the plane, relax. When you're on your way to your state, relax. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? When you get into a ship and there seem to be some waves here and there causing the boat to be shaken from the left to the right, relax. You know why? He is the one who is faithful and he will never leave you nor forsake you that you may be bold enough to say, the Lord is my helper. Sit down, I know that I wrote the script. What is shaking you is not shaking God. Sit down. And the reason why you're worried is because you too, you have not read the script. So faith is positive response with corresponding action. When it comes to the word and the will of God. Write this down. I think it will help you as we build up. Faith is absolute confidence in the person of God. Faith is absolute confidence in the person of the almighty God. And why do you have confidence in him? Because he's faithful and he's able. He is faithful and he's able. Come on, somebody say, my God is faithful. God is able to do just what? See? He is God. Every. Don't give up on. For he will give. Now that, that, is, that is one thing that should make you rest. He is able. But not just able. He is faithful. Faithful is he who has called you. I've seen too many able people who are not faithful. Have you seen people who have what it takes to help you and they promise to help you and not that they lost money but they changed their minds. He said I am the Lord and I change it not. Your able God is a dependable God. Your able God is not a changeable God. He changes things but remains unchanged. His nature is consistent. His character is consistent. Five things to remember about faith. Five things to quickly remember about faith. The nature of faith. Number one, faith sees the invisible. This is how faith works. Faith sees the invisible. Faith doesn't look at what is visible. Faith, the nature of faith, the way faith works, essentially, intrinsically, by the genetic makeup of faith, faith sees the invisible. 
Meaning that faith sees it before man sees it. I'm calling you to the place of faith where you can begin to see your children's children. Where you can begin to see if they die at the age of 50 in your family or they die in their 60s. I'm calling you to the place of faith where you can begin to see yourself at 70, at 80, at 90. And if you like to cross over to 100, good luck to you. Can you see it first? Faith sees the invisible. Imagine David saying to Goliath, um, Hello big man, there are birds already coming. There are birds of the air coming and I've told them to come, I've called them. They are coming to eat you. It's a sorry, sir. Let me tell you, we've not started the fight. Let me just tell you what I am seeing, what is going to happen here today. We've not started fighting, but I'm telling you the outcome. Number one, sir, I'm going to call, I'm just looking at your head now. I'm going to cut it off. <laughs> See, I, I grew up, I grew up in the barracks. And I also grew up around Osho in Lagos. If you see a small child looking at an adult and say, Uncle, I'll beat you, please don't fight. Whatever, what, <laughs> such kids, thank you, sir, they have backup. They can slap you and you wonder what you are experiencing. If I were a Goliath, that's where this battle would have ended. At, at least it's better to be told you were defeated or you ran from battle than to die. So, so David, please look if you can. I'm trying to show you how I'm trying to show you how faith works. It sees the invisible. And it look, he looked at Goliath and he said, Hello, sir, how are you? Uh I notice, I, I notice everybody's afraid of you. And all the military might of Israel has gone into hiding because, well, let me just tell you, I'm a new guy. I, I didn't go to any of the military school. All these guys, they all went to military school. They all trained in the military. I have not been trained. I'm just a shepherd. Uh, but I'm, I'm already seeing your head. I'm caught, your head is already gone. That's even the first thing I want to tell you. Uh, your head is gone. Number two, I want to tell you that um, your body too will not be buried. Yeah, because already my friends are coming. I'm, I'm a hunter, so normally birds normally come around me. So the birds that ate the lion I killed and ate the, uh, the bear, uh, they know I always feed them. So you are the next meal. I'm, I'm offering you as the next. I'm only telling you the outcome of this battle before we start fighting. This is perhaps to give you an opportunity for you to escape. But if you choose to still fight, that's okay. I will just confirm what I, by the time I take action, you will know that what I said is real. faith. Sorry please I'm talking about a 17 year old talking. See how a 17 year old is talking. We are trained generals could not speak. Faith sees the impossible. Now watch this carefully. Goliath said okay I stay here you stay there. He says I know I can't say all these things and I stay here. So that's why many people have said it and it has never happened. Because they say, they, they stand, they speak, they stand. There's no movement, no corresponding action. So I'm running towards you because I believe so much in what I'm saying. I can't wait. I'm running towards you, sir. And I'm pulling this in. And I'm sending this stone in your direction. Is it possible that the reason why you spoke, you've spoken and it has not come to pass is because there is no corresponding movement in the direction of your declaration? David began to run, run towards him because faith sees the invisible.
That, that's how we got here. We see it first. We see as we're reading the word of God. Wow. And we read where the Bible says, and you will lend to many and you shall not borrow. In the midst of our brokenness, as broke as we were, I told my wife, I said, never shall you borrow in this house. Because it will be the violation of the covenant we are looking at in scripture. You shall lend and you, you shall lend and you shall not borrow. So we saw ourselves lending to many when we needed money. Faith sees. And what we saw, we are seeing. It's the way faith works. If you see it, you will see it. You see how that is? If you can see it, you will see it. Number two. DNA of faith. Faith believes the incredible. Faith believes the incredible. Permit me please by any stretch of your imagination. To think. Please look up everybody. To think that the stone in your pouch. Is going to penetrate the brass metal. On the head of Goliath. Two. What makes you think from the distance. From which you are going to throw that thing. Because we understand by the law parabola. That once something begins to move. The energy of that thing begins to get weakened. So at impact. It is expected. That there should be no major effect. So what makes you think. What makes you believe. That in your own case, as you throw the stone, it will be gaining momentum as it goes. Is there any physics student here? Are there science students here? Sorry, does it make sense that something is moving? You throw an object. And the object maintains not speed. The object gains speed and strength as it goes. And a stone hits metal brass. Rather than breaking to pieces, it pierced through it. And then hits a skull. And then penetrated the skull. And caused instant collateral damage. It is not the stone that killed the man. They believe wrapped around the stone. And the force from heaven that went with it. Somebody, somebody was there enough to believe the incredible. That my little can be backed up by God to do something extraordinary. Faith believes the incredible. That you will carry five loaves of bread with three fish. And then you will foolishly. See, I don't have a problem with the man who believes that the five loaves will feed 3,000 or 5,000. I don't have a problem with the person who believes it. At least he's fooling himself. My problem is with the elderly men. Who he called. After breaking five loaves of bread, he broke the bread. And then made them also to believe the incredible. I said, okay, guys. <laughs> Pass on there, I give you ten. I give you ten. I just, ten, five, five, hundred notes. Huh? And I give you ten. And I said, please, everybody calm down. Uh, Pastor Sunday, Pastor Shegun, all our pastors, Daddy, plus Daddy Johnson, come out. And I said, please help me to share everybody, two, two, five pastors. And I said, please, you said, everybody, you're going to get 500 Naira note. <laughs> and I only give them 10, 500 Naira note. And I tell them to share it with everybody. Sorry, the persons to be considered for insanity, real insanity, 
It's not the man that told them to distribute 500 naira 10 to, to everybody here. It is those who believe that the thing he gave them will multiply. That's faith. That's the way faith works. It believes the incredible. That is why faith is not domiciled in the realm of rational or logical thinking. You can't operate in this dimension of faith with your logical or rational mind. You can't. To look at your account and believe that you're going to do something a thousand or a million times what you currently have in your account by the end of this year. It takes faith to believe that. I'm showing you how people do extraordinary things. Number three, faith declares the unthinkable. <laughs> faith declares the unthinkable. So faith sees the invisible. Faith believes the incredible. Faith declares the unthinkable. Imagine you just calling your friends, your girlfriends. I'm talking to a single lady here. I praise God. Because you were reading the word of God. And as you were reading, no, she won't admit this. Your time has come. You just read something in the scripture where God just spoke to you from his word. That I'm going to bless you this year. And you, you just believe it. And the next thing you just call a friend. Hey, Natasha, how are you doing? Hey, Yolanda, how are you doing? Oh, you're fine, my friend. What's going on today? And I just want to tell you that this is my year of getting married. Ah. I'm getting married in August. Ah, friend. You, you don't tell me so you don't dare engage. You didn't tell me you're engaged. No, no, I'm already engaged. Well, who is the guy? No, you soon see him. This is crazy. Does it make sense? It is unthinkable. And that's the way faith works. Hello, Mr. Goliath. Um, no, no battle yet. We've not fought. Hello, Mr. Goliath. I'm giving your head this today. To the birds of the air, they are coming. They are so, so you are declaring the unthinkable. That's how faith works. You are too normal. That's why your life is having normal results. Number four, faith receives the impossible. Faith receives the impossible. The way faith works is this. You receive the answer before you have the answer. Did you hear what I just said now? You receive the answer before you have the answer. That's the way faith works. Number five, in the nature of faith, faith possesses the unimaginable. Faith will possess what is unimaginable. It was unimaginable to think that the sword of Goliath will end up in the hand of David. But that's what faith can do. It was unimaginable to think that David will have the head of Goliath in his hand. It was unimaginable before the battle began. Nobody saw such a possibility. Nobody. Not even the king. The king did not see that it is possible for this giant who is stressing everybody. The king did not see the possibility of having his head in the hand of somebody. But that's what faith can do. It makes you possess the unimaginable. How does faith work? I want to quickly share some things with you within the next five minutes. Number one, write this down. How does faith work?
Blessed be God. I learned this very early in my Christian walk. And I just want to help you with this. So, so because many of you want to start talking to Goliath without knowing how faith first is how faith works. Faith must be born in your heart for it to produce results in your life. Faith must be born in your heart for it to produce results in your life. It must be born first before it begins to grow and work. So faith must be born. Pastor Sam, how can faith be born in my heart? Romans chapter 10 verse 17. The NRSV version puts it this way. So faith comes from what is heard. Faith comes from what is heard. And what is heard comes through the word of Christ. Romans 10, 17, the Passion Translation. Faith then is birthed in a heart that responds to God's anointed utterance of the anointed one. So faith is born when you begin to hear the word of God. So how do I have faith born on the inside of me? By exposing myself to the word of God. By exposing myself to testimonies. By exposing myself to the reading and the listening of God's word. Faith is born by hearing God's word. Faith grows where the word grows. The more you allow the word of God to grow in your heart by reading and listening to it, what happens is that faith begins to grow. Nobody gets saved until you are made to understand that God is willing to forgive you. Then you have faith which brings you to salvation. So faith actually grows. It is born first by hearing the word of God. Number two, faith grows also by hearing the word of God. So the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing, watch out. Not hearing CNN reports. Not hearing what your friends are telling you about how many people have died trying what you're about to do. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Surround yourself with positive people. Nothing is killing the growth of faith in some of our lives like the kind of people we surround ourselves with. Hey, now wow, have you had again? This person marriage just failed though. Have you had? I'm sorry. This is the latest one going around in town. You know I told you that this person marriage failed yesterday. There's this new one also. The marriage you don't fail though. God will help us. So I hope our own too will stand. Your own, now your own will go stand. Am I talking to somebody here? Mind who you listen to. Yeah, you know this. Hey, don't lay all this and I tell you in church, forget about it. You know, Abuja is very difficult. You know, Abuja is very tough. That, that's why it will continue to be tough for you. Because as you have spoken, so shall I do, saith the Lord. The Bible said there were 12 lepers, 12 spies who went to the promised land. And the Bible says 10 of them came back and they said, Ha, we saw the land. But they said something. They said, it's not something we can take. We saw giants there. And two guys stood up and they said, hello, sir. I beg to differ. We beg to differ. So we just want to let you know that we, we, we saw the same giant they saw. But when we were seeing the giants, ah, we were seeing bread we can't afford to miss. 
Because as we were looking at them, we saw that they were bread good enough to eat. You didn't hear what I'm saying? Some people saw giants enough to stop them from entering their promised land. Some people saw their promised land with bread in it. So the ones some people call giants, some people call bread. Can, can you see how faith operates? Abuja is, Abuja is very tough. I just saw something yesterday. I, I stumbled on something on Instagram. There's one new restaurant in Abuja here. It's a Chinese restaurant. So when I saw the things they were displaying, I said Chinese came to open new restaurants in Abuja at this time. I said, who wants to buy? Who is going to buy? Some people are going there. They talk to me. I said, people are going there. I then saw another advert of a place where they only sell meat. Does anybody know about it? We went there. Meat. Sir, you sit down and all they just keep giving you is meat. Few minutes they will just come give you meat. Sir, are you okay? I said, who do you want to kill? <laughs> or you want to tell me to, to meat? <laughs> Sir, but I were living there. Because I'm used to suya. When I was growing up. And I mean suya. But that we are done the most. 2,000 naira, 3,000. So when they brought bill, I was about 100 and something thousand or 200,000. I said, sir, for what? Did I eat cow? <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? People were coming. People were. Have you noticed that? Restaurants are opening like crazy in Abuja. Rooftop restaurant. Am I talking? Are we talking here? Wait a minute. In the same country, in the same city, where you are saying there's a casting down. Slap somebody around and say, You better wake up. Daddy, with the challenges in Abuja now. I thought all the car where they are selling cars, I thought they would just look shop close, shop close. Of we are not selling, sir. I am seeing people buy car stands, buying cars. Sorry, please, it's not everyone stealing. You know why? We are in a time of opportunities. We are in the time of opportunities. If your eyes can be open, you will see what men are not seeing. Faith grows. Thank you, sir. Faith grows where the word grows. If I were you, this is the time to put your feet in the water and carry your Bible in your hands. And if you are not a hard copy person, you want to make sure now you want to get into the word of God like you've never done before. Am I talking to somebody here? Because your faith can never grow if your commitment to the word doesn't grow. I, I have never seen strong faith without strong commitment to the word. So your faith in the word, your faith grows to the extent to which your commitment to the word of God grows. Help me touch your neighbor and say to the person, it's time to study the word. Oh, come on, say like you mean to say, it's time to study the word. It's time to get yourself in the word. As you are reading the word and you are saying, God, let, let me tell you how to read the word of God. If you are going through financial crisis, raise your hands up. You're going through financial crisis. Fantastic. If you are going through a leadership situation where you need wisdom for leadership, raise your hands up. Fantastic. Whatever your situation is, there is what to call a biased approach to studying God's word. You can't be going through a specific situation and be reading the entire word of God. So when you are sick, what do you read? You begin to read scriptures, promises on what sir? On healing. As you are reading, if they shall serve me, I will take sickness away from the midst. Uh -uh. Wait, am I serving God? Am I really committed to serving? Okay, let me get involved in what sir? Because that's one of the covenant principles for, he, for, for enjoying health. Okay. Who forgiveth all my iniquities and healeth all. 
he forgives how many? He forgives all my iniquities and he let all my this. He forgiveth all my iniquities. He let all my this. Wait. When God forgave me, how many sins did he leave behind? Because of how complicated they are. None. He forgave all. If he forgave me of all, how many sickness did he leave behind? Please, and don't forget, he forgives you all your iniquities and see the problem with the message we receive in the body of Christ is that we receive salvation apart from healing. The way it works is that the day you were saved, that same day you should have been taught that you were also watched that. He forgave it and he healed it. Meaning the forgiveness is not real if the sickness is still there. Come on, are you getting what I'm saying here? How do you know you've been forgiven? By faith. Am I correct? Did anything change in your body? No, talk to me. When God forgave you, did you become a white man, black woman? Did your color change? When God forgave you, did your height change? You believed that you are saved, right? Did you see where they were writing your name in the book of life? You, this, you believed. Am I correct? Now, this is, how the, this is how faith works. So now I know, I believe that my sins have been forgiven. In the same vein, I believe without feeling anything that I'm already healed. And never again will I call myself a sick person. Just like never again do I call myself a sinner. I'm sure you have faith works. That was why before I became born again, I used to have nose bleeding. My mother is here. Every night, most of the nights, I'll just, I'll just dream that I'm bleeding and I wake up and I'm bleeding. Strange case. I don't know what medical people call that. I just, particularly during hot season like this, I just bleed. But when he forgave me, I believe the same scripture. You for, I've been quoting the scripture for years. You forgive my iniquities. You heal my diseases. That was it all. No medical attention. And I'm, it's gone. I'm showing you the connection between your faith and the word of God. Your faith grows from the word. Say it again. Say my faith grows from the word. See, I'm just laying foundation today because I, I want to take you into... We're going to move in the second service into faith names it to become it. And then I will go to four other things that makes faith to work. I'm going to give you 60 seconds. Because we must practice what we are taught. Faith sees. Faith says. Can I give you 60 seconds to see your future and declare it with your mouth. Can I give you 60 seconds to see this whole year and declare what you are seeing concerning 2024? Would you stand to your feet? Let me give you that opportunity right now. I want you to open your mouth and begin to declare what you see, knowing fully well that the Lord said, as I hear you speak, so shall I bring it to pass. You want to open your mouth and begin to speak into, thank you Father because 2024, I see it as a year of surplus. I see it as a year of unusual access to the presence of God. I see this year as a year of finishing my project. What are you saying with your mouth? Open your mouth and say, I'm out of debt. I'm out of debt. Completely out of debt. And I have surplus. My bills are paid. Lord, I thank you because my business is thriving. Doors are opening. Favor is coming. Things are turning around. I'd like you to open your mouth. You have your own opportunity to say something about your own life. Open your mouth and just shift the balance of power. You have your own opportunity. Nobody can speak over your life like you can speak over your own life. Nobody can speak over your life like you can speak over your life. See it and say it. See it and say it. It said, Jeremiah, what seest thou? 
He said, I see an almond. I see. What do you see? Say it. I see favor on every side. I see favor in every direction. I see doors opening. I see increase. I see joy. I see my children. I see my marriage. What do you see? into the atmosphere what do you see this year go ahead and name it name it name it give it a name faith names it before it becomes it What do you see? What do you see? Say it with your mouth. I see my songs going to the nations. I see my books going to the nations. Oh yes, I see the project completed. Oh yes. I see my school fees paid. Oh yes, I see my master sorted out, my PhD done. In Jesus name. Father, we thank you for this moment. Thank you, Father. Let me join faith with you to declare this. And all I need is your amen in this house. Everything you have seen and you have declared with your mouth, which you will begin to pursue, you will see them come to pass. I need your amen to connect with this authoritative declaration. Everything you have seen by the same grace which has made it happen in my life and is making it happen in my life and in the lives of our fathers. Everything you have seen which your mouth has declared and you are committed to pursuing it becomes a reality in your life. I say it becomes a reality in your life. It becomes a reality in your life. If you receive it, let your amen be strong in the house of God. It's because of our time. I'll continue in the second service. For all of you who are business owners and entrepreneurs, I really want to stretch your mind with this teaching of faith so that you go beyond your current level. What you call faith is a smaller version of it which makes those in the secular world to succeed. What language do they call it? Risk. And if you notice everything I'm teaching you here is what they use. That's what they use when it comes to risk. Right? They build things. And when they build, they tell you that we are building because we know people will come. What guarantees them that people will come? They learn from the scripture what belongs to us. They are using it to ride over us. It was just an announcement. Somebody just came and said, we will plant man in space. What? What? Do you mind just announcing the president of the United States? He said, United States will go to space. How? I don't know. There's no ladder from here to there. It's incredible. That's how, that's how faith works. Your life is too normal because your words are too normal. 
We're going to space. How are you going to get there? Ladder or are you going to jump? Somehow, somehow it has happened. Am I correct? Are you aware now the one man just opened his mouth from nowhere and just said, no, 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 no. Going to moon is not an important matter. Say, look, I'm, I'm building a plan now to transport 100 people to planet Mars. Anybody have heard somebody say that? What's his name? Elon Musk. 100 people say it's going to take them to planet Mars. Did you hear Musk say something? He said, all of us are going to die after all. He said, everybody's going to die, right? He said, so why don't you consider the possibility of dying in mass? See, see how you want to die normal. See how you want to die abnormal. Can you see how somebody is thinking? You will die. I will die, right? So why die in a normal place? Stretch the frontiers of your mind. Have you seen the latest uh, Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce copy, uh, Rolls Royce kind of stuff that the Chinese people have just done? Has anybody seen it? Please see it. Boy. And they made it almost four times lesser than the price of the Chinese, of the normal Rolls Royce. But if you see it, sir, it keeps Rolls, Rolls Royce by. They took their time. I was in London yesterday and I saw cars, Quantai, Quan something. And I was telling Dr. Inka, I said, Dr. Inka, what's happening? What is, what is Quanti, Quantai doing in London? He said, sir, they're about to sweep the entire market. He said, I'm in the business and leadership world. He said, recently what we are studying is the leadership model of China. He said, in every way conceivable, in every sector, he said, China has outpaced the United States and United Kingdom. incredible comprehensions imaginations they are stretching the frontiers of their mind somebody is here pastor let me just bring the food i want they are coming they are coming to buy cashew from kogi Taking your cashews from Kogi outside. Yo, you just be looking at cashew. Ah, cashew plenty for here. That's all you can see. Cashew plenty for here. Please let me slap somebody. Say, wake up, wake up, wake up. Cashew plenty for here. Amen. So I want to stretch the frontiers of your mind. Because if you continue like this, nothing will change by the end of this year. So I want, to, I want to bring the faith component into your daily life. As you go back to that office tomorrow, you declare something about your office. Hallelujah. I see a bigger office. If you are renting, all of you who are doing businesses in the rented apartments, I want to dare you to make up your mind this year. That your company must have its own office. Your amen is sounding as if they kept you in the bush. You know, don't even call me to come and cut the tape of a rented apartment. Pastor Sunday can cut that for you. But you want to invite me, Papa? We are, no matter how small it is, it is your own. Build something. Stop bragging, you know. We just rented another. Uh, we are the seventh floor of this tall building. Inside, we say, who tied you there? Your faith hasn't conceived it. That's why it's not coming towards you. Thank you for watching. We hope you were blessed and richly transformed by this sermon. Join us on site and online in any of our centers globally as displayed on the screen. When we pray, there's a God who hears us. Yeah. When we pray, there's a God to enter. Yeah. When we pray, we prevail, we prosper.
Follow us on all social media handles as shown on the screen. Also, don't forget to join Prophetic Prayer Hour with Rev. Sam Oye, weekdays Monday to Friday by 5.50 a.m. West African time. Join on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram at Rev. Sam Oye. Please invite your friends and family members, for with our God, all things are possible. For more inquiries, visit www.thetransformingchurch.org. We celebrate you. I'm intoxicated by the power in that name. That name is more powerful than neutron bomb, more powerful than chemotherapy. That name is more powerful than radiotherapy. I've seen the name work. This is the Transforming Church International. One church making global impact.